Hi everyone, it's Josie Weiss and I have a new holiday story for you. This one is called Clarice, the chicest mouse in Paris, holiday heist. This story is by Megan Hess. She is a wonderful Australian fashion author and illustrator. This is a special edition I bought from David Jones. Look, here's little Clarice. Hello, would you like to say hello? I have someone special to introduce you to. Look, this is little Harlow. Say hi, Harlow. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> Make sure you buy this book so you can read along with me. What can you see on the front cover of this story? I see Clarice the mouse and a Christmas tree. I see some presents and Clarice is holding a beautiful ruby red ring. Wow, look at all the pictures. What can you see? I see a handbag and some treasure. And little Clarice. It's Clarice. In New York for winter was chic little Clarice. She travelled so far from her maison in Paris. Here she is sitting on the balcony. <gasps> Look at the Christmas tree. With her friend by her side, a cat called Monsieur. Christmas would be a dream, of that she was sure. The whole family loved prepping their New York abode for the holiday season while outside it snowed. Well, all except one, their daughter, the brat, who could make a big fuss at the drop of a hat. Where are my other gifts? She screeched in dismay. We have to go out to buy lots more today. Goodness me, she's having a bit of a tantrum, I think. She doesn't seem like a very friendly girl. While well, Madame calmed down her terrible brat, Monsieur pricked an ear. Oh, did you hear that? What fabulous news. We're out for the day to Fifth Avenue and then Bergdorf's Cafe. Clarice clapped with delight. Manhattan won't wait. Now to choose a fun look for a tray lovely date. A fashion show was afoot as she tried to decide on the most festive look for the Upper East Side. A Valentino cape would be perfect for snow with some fluffy Chanel or a Fendi with bows. Soon Madame was calling her driver outside and Clara saw something she couldn't abide. Some small mice were shivering, no shoes on their feet. They were hiding away from the wind and the sleet. They asked, chattering, can you spare some food please? Oh dear. Clarice said, I am all out of cheese. Before she could find the right way to assist, the car had arrived and off she was whisked. Clarice held Monsieur's paw. She was feeling quite blue. She'd wanted to help them, but what could she do? They soon came to a store wrapped in bows with great flair. It was magical, beautiful, New York's Cartier. As the brat made a beeline for jewels shining bright, Clarice was drawn to an interesting sight. A man at the counter, so vintage and chic. Can you polish this ring? It's a precious antique. It's my wife's wedding band. 50 years we're united. It's a family heirloom. She'll be so delighted. Clarice watched in awe and held back her tears. How splendid, she thought, to be loved all those years. He left the ring on the glass, but what caught her eye? <gasps> Why, a paw from a bag. It was ever so sly. The paw snatched the ring at incredible speed. Our mouse gave a gasp. <gasps> what a horrible deed. Yet the bag stylish owner did not seem to know that she harboured a thief. Quite clearly a pro. 
Clarice and Monsieur, without missing a beat, went after the woman out onto the street. The woman walked fast, her Louboutins click clacking. The chase was now on and it was nerve wracking. She hailed a cab, Upper East, Lower West. Either way, our two heroes would not stop their quest. Quick, Clarice, jump! They can't get away! This taxi's about to take off for Broadway! As they zoomed through New York, past the lights of Times Square, no one noticed this unlikely crime-busting pair. The taxi pulled up at a grand old townhouse. Come on, Monsieur, said our brave little mouse. Follow my lead. I've a plan that's foolproof. A window is open up there on the roof. They scurried and darted from the rail to the ledge. Stopping this burglar was Clarice's pledge. They burst through the window and were shocked to see the spoils of this thief's elaborate crime spree. The smug cat lay sprawled in a jewel-covered nest. Liz Taylor herself would have been so impressed. He admired the ring that he'd stolen that morn, then cast it aside with the others and yawned. He doesn't even care about the ring. Clarice quickly marched over and seized back the ring. You are busted, cat burglar, and I must say one thing. You're not just stealing jewellery, but breaking the hearts of people in love, tearing memories apart. The thief startled, then let out a frightening growl. Get out, little mouse, or I'll eat you, he yelled. Monsieur bared his teeth, and the burglar shrank back. It seemed Clarice was safe from becoming his snack. Well, it's nice to have friends like Monsieur, isn't it? In case you get into a sticky situation. With the ring in her clutches, Clarice was sure they were ready to finish this little detour. As they left, she hoped they had planted the seed that the thief should retire from his incessant greed. Let's take back this ring. It's high time we split. Cartier closes soon, so let's step on it. They hitched a ride back with a nice horse named Dazzle, arranged by their French friends, Ollie and Basil. Can you see Dazzle, the horse here? What's Dazzle wearing on his head? Can you see? I think he's wearing a feather hat. As they passed Central Park, Clarice polished the ring so the man could collect it that same evening. At Cartier, the brat could be heard from outside, still wanting more gifts, though the bows were all tied. I want more, the brat screamed. It's all about me. I don't have enough. Oh, why can't you see? Her nasty explosion gave Clarice a chance to return the man's ring without drawing a glance. Oh, hello, Harlow. As they stood on the sidewalk, awaiting their car, Clarice saw a white flash darting in from afar. It was there for one second, but then lost a sight. And moving so fast, it gave Clarice a fright. The doorman looked down, all these jewels had appeared, but who did they come from? How terribly weird. Who do you think the jewels might have come from? Do you know? Clarice realised the cat might be changing his ways and giving up theft till the end of his days. From Fifth to Tribeca, past New York's best art, our pair taught a thief to remember his heart. It was time to go home as a good deed was done. What an adventure and oh so much fun. Merry Christmas, said Monsieur. Your heart is so true. You are so kind to others. Now, here's something for you. Clarice opened the box and found her favourite cheese. She smiled and gave him a big mousy squeeze. Her face filled with joy and she suddenly knew there was one last thing that we just have to do. Clarice and Monsieur found those mice in the cold and brought them some cheese, warmth and baubles in gold. Clarice didn't have much, 
there's still plenty to share. It's important in life to show that you care. What matters the most is not what you can take, but good times with friends are the memories you'll make. The new friends all laughed as snow fell from above, and Clarice knew that the meaning of Christmas was love. Megan Hess. She's the author and illustrator of this story. Well, thanks for reading with me everyone. If you like that story, you can make sure you buy it and like and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Bye!